In this video, we're going to discuss what a spinal fusion is. We'll talk a little bit about the role that the instrumentation has with a fusion, and talk specifically about what we're trying to achieve when we're performing a spinal fusion. One question that people ask quite a bit in my clinic, and for which there seems to be a fair amount of misunderstanding or misconceptions, is really what a spinal fusion is. And to be honest with you, even when I was in my training, I didn't quite understand some of the distinctions. So I'm hoping with this video to really answer more about what it is, give you a better sense of what a spinal fusion is, a little bit of like when you might use a spinal fusion, some of the considerations or concerns with doing it, uh, and even like what the role of instrumentation is. So a spinal fusion is when you take two bones of the spine and effectively glue them together. You're trying to unite them or fuse them together like the name implies. So if you watched any of my videos on say cervical spine anatomy, you'll understand that your spine is a stack of blocks. And if you're trying to take two blocks and glue them together, we call that a spinal fusion. Now, there's lots of reasons for doing a spinal fusion. Sometimes people have a fracture and it's unstable. Sometimes they have instability for different reasons, just degenerative instability. Sometimes in order to take the pressure off the nerves or off the spinal cord, you destabilize the spine. So you make it no longer stable to achieve the goal of a decompression, in which case you go on to have to fuse it. So there are a variety of reasons that you would have to fuse the spine. But what it means is really that you're taking two bones and gluing them together. That we call a single level fusion. Now, if you were gluing three bones together, or two discs, that's a two-level fusion. And some people will say I had a double fusion or a triple fusion or something like that. That's a bit of a colloquial term. Uh, for us, we think of it as a one-level, two-level fusion, but a single-level fusion is when you take two bones and glue them together. So what does that require? That requires that often we'll put spacers in there to kind of make sure that their alignment is correct, that the two bones are where we want them to be when they're glued together. And then we fill that space in with some type of material that will help the bones unite. Usually that's graft material. So when people say graft, that means that there's bone of some sort. It could be from a cadaver and we call that allograft. We could be from the patient themselves and we call that autograft. There's different types of autograft and allograft, but that graft material you can really think of as being the substrate within which bone grows. But bone growth is a biological process. You can't make bone grow. An analogy that I use a lot with patients and with trainees is that getting bone to grow is like getting grass to grow. You require soil, which is the substrate within the, which the grass grows. You need seeds and you need fertilizer. So in the context of bones, we think of osteoconduction, uh, which is the soil, osteoinduction, which is the fertilizer, and osteogenesis. But you need seed, soil, and fertilizer. So to have all those different components, they need to come from somewhere. And so when we're trying to get bone to heal, we do a couple of things. We lay in a sometimes cadaver bone that's great for soil, doesn't have a lot of fertilizer, but you might add fertilizer. You might look for elsewhere to get the seeds either locally or from the hip or from bone marrow or something like that. But you try to put all that stuff together into the space between the bones to help the bone heal. Now it can take six to 12 months for bone to heal. We don't usually say that a fusion has failed until it reaches 18 to 24 months without clear bone growing across it. So it is not something that happens right away. It takes bone a while to grow. And it depends a little bit on what type of graft material, some of it grows faster than others, but that is an important part of the whole thing. Now, as I said earlier, when we're trying to get bone to grow, we wanna put it in the right spot. So if you're gonna glue two blocks together, you wanna put them where you want them to settle and then glue them like that. So much like if you're gluing blocks of wood together and you put a clamp on it to hold it together, when we're trying to achieve a fusion, we put a spacer between the bones, we put in graft material, and then often we'll put some type of instrumentation on. So if it's a surgery, say from the front of the neck, we put a little spacer, some graft material between the bones, and then a plate on the front to hold everything together. If we're doing a surgery from the back, we don't use a plate, but we would often use screws and rods to hold everything together. But the important thing there is to realize the hardware is meant to hold things together long enough for the bone to heal. Hardware will not work forever. At some point, hardware will fail. And if the bone hasn't healed and the hardware fails, we consider that a hardware failure. But at the root of that is really a non-union that the fusion hasn't healed or what we call pseudoarthrosis. So when we put hardware in, it's really to hold things together long enough for the bone to heal. 
So at some point, if the bone heals, you don't really need the hardware. It could be removed, but we very rarely have to remove it. On some occasions, we'll take it out if we have to. And it's not even that uncommon for it to break in a delayed fashion. If it breaks and the fusion is solid, it's not really a big deal. What I wanted to cover primarily with this video is what a fusion is. A fusion is bony healing or uniting two bones, getting them to glue together. Now, not all patients, not all material are the same. Some people have a higher risk of fusions not taking, and that could be things like smokers, uh, people with nutritional problems, people on chronic steroids or other medications that affect the immune system, and there's other factors. There are things that predispose people to not fusing. One of the things we always tell people when we do these surgeries is we follow them often to one or two years to make sure that the fusion is healed. Because once a fusion is healed, it generally does not come apart. It's something that is super solid. Now, just on a high level, there's different types of fusion. It can be done from the front, it can be done from the back, but a fusion in general is when you're trying to get bones to heal together. It doesn't require instrumentation to stabilize it, but it's most often done with instrumentation. But the instrumentation itself does not make a fusion. So I hope I've kind of clarified with this what a fusion in is on a high level. Obviously, in future videos, we can talk specifically about the details of different types of fusion. But if you have any other questions or comments about this, it would really help me to grow the channel and to kind of understand what you guys want to hear about. If you could leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. Thank you.